All right, starting off. All right, so hi, everybody. Um, I'm Kyle Barbary. Um, I'm a postdoc at uh, Berkeley and the Berkeley Institute for Data Science. Um, see my uh, Twitter and GitHub handles up there. Uh, so I just want to give you a little taste in a lightning talk about A, um, why I'm excited about Julia for uh, specifically my corner of astronomy, the kind of astronomy I do, and B, uh, a little bit about the Julia Astro organization, what's going on with that. Okay, so um, I'll start by telling you a little bit about myself to give you an idea of where I'm coming from. Um, this is my, hand, my tagline on Twitter, astrophysicist with a software event. So astrophysicist is just, you know, something astronomers call themselves when they want to sound more impressive. Um, specifically, I do uh, processing of large survey images. Um, so this is one example of what the focal plane from one of our surveys looks like. So it's 64, 62 CCDs, about 500 megapixels. Um, and specifically, I am interested in looking for supernovae that explode in some of the galaxies in these images. Um, so you wouldn't be able to, you know, you're looking at a handful of pixels within one of those CCDs. And what you do is you um, take an image, you come back later, take a new image, and you see the supernova and detect it, right? So you can see the pixel scale here. It's super small compared to all this, right? Um, and then once you do that enough, coming back, uh, you can measure how the supernova gets brighter and then fades away. Okay. So it's, uh, on one hand, image processing, um, modeling, brightness of things in images. And another aspect is once you've done the image level stuff, modeling physics or you know, building models of what this brightness looks like in order to infer interesting things about the universe. Um, on the software side, I'm um, coming from the Python world. So uh, I've been involved in a project called AstroPy, and I've done a lot of work on another project that's smaller that's uh, a Python project specifically for doing this kind of stuff. Um, in practice, I get carried away with uh, all this stuff, and I never end up doing this stuff. <laughs> all right, so <coughs> as astronomy is interesting right now. Um, Python is sort of very on the rise still in astronomy. Um, until quite recently, this language that I think maybe only astronomers use called IDL, maybe some people know it, um, it has kind of been dominant, but Python is uh, finally overtaking it. Uh, so it's kind of an interesting time to be excited about a different thing than everybody else. <laughs> um, so. I feel like I should say a little bit about this, this AstroPy project that I mentioned, um, because I'm about to uh, say some not as nice things about it. It, it really is amazing. Um, it's really brought astronomers together, contributing to a common core base. You can see here it has 125-ish contributors to the main repository. Um, and it, it's uh, really been great for uh, building uh, you know, a common code base. But sometimes I've found that it ends up being the bottleneck in your code, and it's hard to speed up for all the typical reasons. So this is kind of um, how I first uh, got excited about Julia. Um, I tried out this simple example. Um, this is some code that Mike Nolta wrote. Uh, so this is calculating distances in the universe. Um, the universe has weird geometry because it's expanding, so it's not totally trivial. Um, so this is the, the best thing for doing this in in the uh, AstroPy package in Python. This particular calculation takes 130 microseconds. Um, the Julia version looks exactly the same. It's like 20 times faster. Uh, and, and in both cases, it's kind of the most straightforward code. You can write the Julia version. It's probably even more readable. So I saw this. I was like, this is, this is going to be good. OK. Uh, another example, like the second thing I tried, was uh, another pretty simple thing. Um, this is a, uh, so we, in astronomy, we fit these uh, models for how dust extincts um, light, right? Uh, and what these end up looking like is, you know, some functional form over here, and then some power law up here, and it's kind of like a mishmash that just happens to fit the observations, right? 
Um, so, uh, so it ends up being something that's kind of hard to vectorize. Uh, so if you just write a vectorized version in using NumPy with Python, you get something like this. In Julia, it's a lot cleaner, and it runs way faster. Um, in Python, of course, you can use Cython to speed things up with C, and you can get pretty close to this number. But actually, the best version in the AstroPy universe um, does use Cython, but then it adds in runtime unit checking, and it slows things back down. So, and in, in both of these two examples I just showed were actual things that were bottlenecks for what I was doing. One last uh, fun example. Um, it wasn't a bottleneck for me, but just something that uh, I wanted to try out was uh, switching between coordinate systems on the sky. Um, so the, uh, these are the Python versions with scaling with the number of coordinates you're converting. So this is like one coordinate, 10, 100, 1,000, et cetera. So the Python version at the one coordinate level is 100,000 times slower than <laughs> what you can do in Julia. And it's not because this couldn't be faster. It's just because people, when they're, a lot of times I find when they're writing the Python version, they just assume as long as it scales well in the large end limit, it's fine. And they kind of forget that sometimes you need to do 100,000 coordinates before you get the large end scaling. All right, so yeah, AstroPy is great. If, you, it's, if it's fast enough, it's great. But if you hit a bottleneck, it's a classic story. Um, it's hard to leave the SciPy universe and drop down to the C level. There is a limited number of people who are familiar with C, so it's, uh, you know, there's worries about maintainability, about putting a lot of C code in. Um, like I said, the large end assumption. Something I didn't talk about is that uh, a lot of times it seems like it's hard to decide what goes in this core package. And I found that uh, Julia's style of organ uh, organizing code around organizations and having smaller packages is uh, a lot easier in practice. Uh, all right, so about what's going on in this Julia Astro organization, uh, we just have a few packages there right now. Um, a couple of them I just mentioned, cosmology and dust extinction. Um, these three are wrappers for C libraries that already exist, thankfully. I've mainly been working on this FITS.io package for doing, um, dealing with FITS files, which are, for better or worse, the standard in astronomy. They're, it's about a 35-year-old standard, as you can kind of see from the 90s style website. Um, and at this point, we've got a pretty nice interface uh, for, use, for interacting with the C library. Um, so these FITS files are sort of, uh, they have extensions that could be images or tables. So if you just open the file, you can see what extensions are in the file and uh, what kind of thing they are. And then there's, there's a slight abstraction in that you can index into the file, uh, so the first index tells you information about the uh, first extension. And if you look, it's the type of it is an image HDU. And you can do the same thing with tables and then just read that to actually read the data. So I think it's pretty nice. Um, it's kind of like the first thing you have to do to, that, to do anything in astronomy, at least in uh, my field of astronomy. All right, so <laughs> every time I mention, perfect. Every time I mention um, this to Fernando Perez, he's like, Julia Astro, I hate the name. Um, you should really call it Astro Julia. So I want to take an informal poll, since it's still early, um, about how many people think we should go with like, the typical uh, you know, Julia blank name, or we should switch it up. All right, so wait, wait, wait. Who, OK, hands, hands for Julia Astro. All right, hands for Astro Julia. Whoa. <laughs> All right, noted. <laughs> All right, this is me, thanks. Um, I think actually, yeah, some of the some of them I could. Uh, Can you repeat your 
Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, the question was, the, those like, little benchmarks I was showing, have I run them with PyPy instead of uh, the C Python implementation of Python? Um, yeah, I could. I haven't. Uh, it would be interesting. Thank you for being so good to uh, adjust to the schedule.